Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We have a special guest on the line right now. Mr. Nina Absolutely. Turner, welcome. Thanks. How you doing? How are you doing? Uh, how, how are you feeling? How you quarantining? All right. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> How's the family? Just checking in and making sure everybody's good. Yeah, everybody's good. Are you guys' families doing well? Yeah, everybody's doing, Absolutely. doing well. Everybody's doing well. I hear a little echo. I don't know if that's you, yeah, Charlemagne. Just make sure your laptops are down. Oh, that might be echo. me. Hold on, hold on. Mine's hold on, down, on. yeah. All right. Now, now, Nina, you know, yesterday uh, Bernie Sanders endorsed Joe Biden. And, you know, my first question is, you know, what does Joe Biden have to do to get supporters of Bernie like yourself to actually vote for him other than just being the alternative of Trump? I'm sorry, as you know, the senator has always said that he was going to endorse whoever the nominee was. So that's really not breaking news. You know, why people were, were acting like it's breaking news. It's not. If we go back to the debate stages, he was always one of the first candidates to say, if not the first candidate to say, hey, whoever wins, I'm with you. In terms of the supporters, I mean, this is a, a mission issue oriented movement. And the slogan, not me, us, is real to many of Senator Sanders supporters. And so it's going to be vitally important that the vice president and his team adhere to the mission of Medicare for all, Green New Deal, canceling student debt, all of the things that this movement has been fighting for for well over five years, that is really what it's going to take. And that is what I am hearing from many of the senator's supporters. And you know what? In some people's eyes, he's off to a good start. At least him and the senator have had conversations. The senator has endorsed him. And the senator is in there fighting for those issues. The issues that the senator ran on, that doesn't change. Now, let me I've seen that Joe Biden you... has put forward some plans already talking about student loan debt and all of that. So is there a plan for and I, I saw that the two of them had their conversation and have given each other their support. So do you think that Bernie Sanders will be somewhat involved in creating these plans? I know they've been talking about putting together like uh, different teams of people. So where is that conversation at now? Yes, Angela, they are putting together those teams right now. It's going to be, I think it's either five or six teams, the economy, immigration, criminal justice, education, health care. Yes, those teams are being put together as we speak, and they should be announced really soon. Now, what do you say? Which task force are you on, that? Nina? Which task know. force you on? If Nina not on the task all, force, I'm not, all I'm of not them. riding. <laughs> Charlotte, you know those people don't. They listen, I'm a movement leader, so it's best that I stay on the outside moving so I can be all the way grown and tell the truth, <laughs> the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So I hope all of us Absolutely. got So, you know, and I'm I'm crying out to black Jesus right now on that. No, seriously, <laughs> I, I I I need this for a time such as this, I need to be with the people. I am a movement leader at this stage in my life and that's where I am most comfortable. And let's be honest, I told some truths about you know, the vice president about the campaign. So be honest, I I'm not the sister that they want. You know, I am on the island of misfit black girl. So hold on, you telling me that they don't, they, don't, they don't want truth tellers? That's what you're basically saying. Like, why wouldn't they want truth tellers on the side? You know, sometimes people are more comfortable not necessarily hearing the truth. I mean, they should want truth tellers, but uh, not necessarily in the world of politics. That's not always... A, a promising thing. People don't like to necessarily mm. hear the truth. But too many people are suffering right now to play games with this. You know, people are dying. We know that the African American community is dying at disproportionate rates to our uh, numbers in the population in terms of this COVID, or as my elder said, Miss Corona. That's what she called it. Miss Corona is really, you know, <laughs> knocking us out. And this is not no, nothing new. The saying is true that when America, white America catches the cold, black America catches the flu what happens when we have COVID-19. And so the disproportionate suffering of African-Americans does require a disproportionate answer. And that answer is bigger than the man in the White House. I'm interested to see what phase four of the stimulus package is going to look like for everyday people. So now, now that all hearts and minds are clear that the COVID is impacting the African-American community deeper and more deadlier, I want to see what folks are going to do about it. But this is not new. All of the negative indicators in society always hurt the African-American. We we're always the ones hurt more deeply. That's just called being in America, but it's time for that to stop. 
So, so I'm very comfortable being a movement leader. I'm very comfortable with the following that I've built in this movement. People know that I have their backs, and, and that's where I want to be. What do you say to the people that, that felt that maybe Bernie Sanders should have dropped out a lot sooner? You're trying to get me to cuss on this show. I'm just, I'm just asking a question. I'm just, I see that little smirk. I'm just Go ahead and cuss, a Nina. A lot of people ask. So I'm just space, asking Nina. that question. Go ahead and cuss if you want to cuss. I mean, it begins with F <laughs> uh, and you. It's supposed to be a democracy the last time I checked. I mean, get out earlier. He out earlier. This, this will go round. And even in 2016, people deserve to have a choice. DJ MV, people shouldn't be, you know, this is not a coordination. It's called competition. And what our movement was able to do was bring to the fore the suffering of people, to bring to the forefront that, you know what, American people, 99%, you do deserve nice things. You deserve clean air, clean water, clean food. You deserve to be able to look into the eyes of your babies and say to them, I might, mama or daddy might not make a whole lot of money, but you deserve to go to college. Let's go and roll this thing in and have a social contract and let's do college for all. You deserve those things. That is what this movement was able to do. And people will never, ever be able to go back the same, to be in the same. And the beauty about what is happening right now, even though it is a deadly situation, it is a heavy situation, it is an oppressive situation. Nobody can go back and pretend like, the way the healthcare system is commodified, that is okay. Because right. it's not okay to have healthcare attached to a job. When we have, it's going to be about 17 million, they're predicting right now, people unemployed and climbing. We don't know actually what the end is going to be on this. It's going to be higher than it was in the Great Depression of the 1920s. And people still want to pretend like it's okay to have healthcare tied to a job. See, we can't unsee what we now know. That's the beauty of this thing. And so we need to everybody, whether they got a fancy title or not, we need to say these words to ourselves. We will never let this system go back to being the way that it was and that it is owed to the people of this nation to do a new thing. And that the essential workers who are on the front line every day, the store clerk, the, the person working in the drugstore, the medical personnel, the housekeeping people who got to clean up the toxic stuff in the hospitals, that they do deserve better than what they are getting. Because those are the people who are saving our behind. Those are the very people that they didn't want to get $15 an hour. Hello, somebody. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we got you- a lot of work to do, and all of us are responsible for doing that. Now, Cardi B said you know the reason that, that the, Bernie at, didn't necessarily win was because a lot of the young people didn't come out. Do you believe, do you feel the same? I mean, Cardi's on point. It's not just that they, they, they came out. They, they did come out. I mean, in places like Iowa, you know, their numbers were higher than they even were in some previous presidential elections. But we didn't necessarily duplicate that in every single one of the early states before we got to Super Tuesday. So I understand the point that Cardi B is making, which is you got to be in this to win this. You cannot sit on the sidelines. We can be mad as hell, but you got you have to take mm-hmm. action and we have to build the kind of country that we want. And we got to raise hell, too. But raising hell is only one equation of it. We got to get the power. This is about power, just plain and simple. People need to understand this. Good ideas and power is a beautiful thing. Good ideas without power, not so much. So we need Mm. to get out there in the streets and elect people who actually are not going to lose their minds once they get there and that they are going to be committed, win, lose, or draw, to standing up for the everyday people of this nation. And we need that on all levels of government. But Cardi B's point is, is right, raw, and real. Mm-hmm. You know what's interesting? At the same time that you hear that he should have dropped out sooner, I hear a lot of people saying, why did he drop out now when we needed him the most? And this was all the things that Bernie Sanders <clears throat> has been talking about are at the forefront right now, talking about student loans and talking about our health care system and talking about minimum wage and all of that. Some people were writing opinion pieces like this was a terrible time for him to drop out because things could have changed. What did you think about that? I mean, he's in the Senate, Angela, and I understand how people feel, but he's in the Senate. It's his campaign, and, you know, he made a strategic decision that it is important Mm -hmm. that he puts most of his effort into the work of trying to push that Congress to do the right thing. And he has, you know, the unemployment, for example, that we have, the fact that gig workers now 
can file for unemployment, people who are independent contractors. That was never the case before this. And that's one example, Angela, of what I'm talking about, never going back to the way that we were. Now that we have some enhancements in unemployment and that people will get an extra $600 on top of what they ordinarily would get in their state, that's the kind of progress that I'm talking about. Now, we can't go back from that once this is over, once we have a breakthrough and things get back to a certain type of normal, because it's never going to be the way that it was before. But now the Congress can no longer take that back. So now gig workers should always permanently be able to apply for unemployment. Mm -hmm. Independent contractors should always be able to apply for unemployment. Those are the kinds of moves that we need. But that doesn't stop this movement from moving. That not me, us is real. And so those of us who have, who are leaders in this movement, both top leaders and then also citizen leaders. We got to be engaged. This has always been bigger than Senator Bernie Sanders. But, you know, um, Professor Yamada Taylor, she's a professor out of Princeton. She wrote a piece called Reality Endorses Bernie Sanders. And I recommend all of the folks that are breakfast club lovers, they need to read that article. The people who rock with you know, the Club, they really need to, to read that article. She's a black professor at Princeton, and she said her, her article, Reality Endorses Bernie Sanders. And, Angela, that's to your point. All of those things that we see, there are structural flaws in this country, and they're just bubbling up to the surface. This is how people have been living. It's always been a pandemic. It just wasn't that's right. uh, COVID, you know, right. but, but people have been living through a pandemic for a very long time. Yeah, the pandemic is called poverty. You know, you know I else I say the media is full of shit because now you hear a lot of people say Bernie Sanders was right or uh, Bernie Sanders has always been right. But they say that after he's dropped out. If you'd have said that while he was running, then maybe you could have changed the tide of things at the, at the polls. They didn't want that, Charlemagne. <laughs> why? Why, I mean, who, who, like, why? Why don't you want what's right? That's what I don't understand. Like, what? What's the, I don't get it. I really don't. Like, that really confuses me. Why wouldn't you want what's right? Because the status quo is more concerned about, with, more concerned with retaining their power than really doing the right thing. The right thing <clears throat> never really wins out unless there's some power behind it. And that's why I'm encouraging people in this movement. I want them to know, sister, girl right here, I'm still here. I'm not going anywhere. And I'm going to continue to be out there lifting my voice and moving people. And we got to move the people with the power. And with the power with the with the power that we gave them, let us not forget that anybody that's elected from dog catcher all the way up to the president of the United States of America, not this current president, but anyway, y'all get the picture. <laughs> but it is the people's power, just it is. And so we have to reconcile ourselves to remember that it is our power, and more importantly, it's our money. So when folks sit up there and say they're not going to do Medicare for all, what do you mean about uh, why, what do you mean by that? And just think about this: people are dying or losing their livelihoods, and you still got folks playing around with the notion that we need universal health care. We need universal right. health care in the United States of America, not tied to a job, period. Dang. Nina, strategically, who do you see as, as a, vice, a great choice for a vice president running mate? And, you know, I don't even want to, I don't know. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm going to tell you. Who would move you? Is there, anybody, is there anybody that would move you to say, okay, now I see that's a, a good choice. That makes me want to put my support. Is there anybody that you're like, this would be a, no? <laughs> Not at this moment. I mean, the kind of people mm-hmm. that I would pick, you know, they wouldn't even uh, dream of entertaining. You know what I want more than anything? is I want somebody that's going to do the people's bidding. And not the bidding yes. of Wall Street, not the bidding mm-hmm. of high-powered lobbyists. I need somebody that's going to do the bidding of the people in the street. That, that's what I want to see. You know, it's time out for this. It, it really is time to take care of the least of these, our sisters and brothers. And we know that we have the money to do it. Every Don't ask about the money. They, as soon as it was time to bail out Wall Street, they found that money. That's right. Quick. Mm-hmm. That's right. Time to put a yes. down payment on Main Street, we had no more that the people of this great nation right. deserve better. And as I've traveled this nation and I've seen many good people from walks of life, but people are suffering and they always have been. What coronavirus has done was expose the frailty of the system in America that is structurally designed on purpose to keep people poor, period. They always find a way to save the people who have the most, but the people who have the least, we always got a question where we're going to get the money from. And that's why I want my sisters and brothers out there to understand it is our damn money, period. Our money. 
And if we want to have a social contract one to another that says that we will have universal health care, that, that everybody in this country who works should have paid medical leave or paid family leave. You know, those very people who are on the front line, those essential workers, most of them don't have paid sick leave. Most of them don't have paid family leave, but they're on the front line so that the people at the top can enjoy. Anyway, don't even get me started. We need to do right. a new thing in the United States of America, period. So, Nina, let me ask you a question. I know you can't speak for everybody, but uh, Brianna Gray, diehard uh, Bernie supporter, she said she cannot endorse Joe Biden because Joe doesn't back all of those things, Medicare for all, canceling all student debt, a wealth tax. I can't be mad at her for that. What, what, what do you feel? You know, Bree Joyce speaks her truth. And, you know, in terms of people catching hell in public about it, you know, working for Senator Sanders, working for the issues, Bree Joyce is right up there with me. I mean, they have done some of the most nasty, distasteful, racist, sexist things to Bree Joy on social media that I've ever seen. And these have been, quite frankly, people with the blue check marks, too. These have been the neoliberals who trust women, you know, trust black women, black women lead. But yet and still, you endorse the level of vitriol that was 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 tossed towards Bree Joy, and it's, it's it's wrong. So I wanna, I'm glad you brought her up, Charlamagne. I want to give a big shout out to Bree Joy. She is fierce. You know, she's on that Angel. She on that island of misfit black girls with me, uh, with people <laughs> like Sojourner Truth and Harriet Tubman and and Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm and Congresswoman Barbara yes. Jordan. Yeah, we on that island of misfit black girls. But I respect Bree Joy, and I respect her position and what she has to say. Again, this is America. Let's question how folks don't try to bully people into doing something. That's right. Like, how are you going to do that? I don't even get it. I don't understand why they're so quick to just give their ass to Joe Biden. Like, at least let him court you a little bit. Make him give you something. Like, I, I respect Bree for that. Like, I'm not just going to give. I'm not going to just endorse this guy because he's the nominee. What is he going to do for us? Right. You got to prove. I said. Mm -hmm. And you guys know, I mean, every time you have me on, no matter what, I always talk about politicians having to earn the vote. Nothing that should be given to, to them. They got to earn it. So, yes, what are you going to do to prove to the progressive wing of the Democratic Party, and particularly the Bernie Kratz, that you really do want their vote? Well, it's not just telling me you love me, baby. You got to show me that you love me. That's right. <laughs> I want to see some Oval Office action, you know what I'm saying, in terms of the policy positions, not putting together little nice little pretty councils, but what are you really going to do at the end of the day with the people's power if you become president of the United States that is going to change their material condition? That is what everybody should be asking for. And so we fall in love with these politicians so much we don't even challenge them. And something is wrong right. with mm -hmm. that. And I'm talking about my class. You know, I served as a state senator, as a councilwoman. I know what it's like to be in caucuses and having to debate people and also to compromise with folks from time to time. But at the end of the day, that is the people's power. What are you going to do with it? For the people. Now with the coronavirus and everything going on, how does this affect the election? You know, people are going to, it's going to be harder for people to go out to vote does this necessarily help the other side? Because it seems like it's definitely going to hurt our side. Well, DJ and, and B, who is what is our side? I don't know. That is true too. <laughs> no, I'm I'm being sarcastic. No, it is definitely going <laughs> to change things. I mean, vote by mail. A lot of states are doing that right now. I hope that every state right now, the twenty, there are twenty seven, uh, twenty states that are left that have not voted. My state is one of those states. Uh, the great state of Ohio. And so we really are calling upon state governments to make sure that vote by mail is an option for people so that people are not getting sick. What they did in Wisconsin was wrong. They put yes. people on the front line. And 14 days from now, we're going to see the cases of the virus spreading going up in that state. Right. It was immoral. It was wrong. Also, March 17th state. You know, they still have people out there voting. My state, Ohio, thank God that my governor, albeit a Republican, did the right thing. You know, clap it up. He did the right thing and didn't put people's lives in jeopardy. So, you know, vote by mail. You know, we, we need to make uh, Election Day a national holiday, period. That should be the case. Yes. Too. Coming out of this, we, we really need some strong reforms when it comes to uh, going to the ballot box and what that looks like in the 21st century. I've heard even some people even float out there. People should be able to vote online. You know, and mm -hmm. there's a way yes. to make that secure. We do our banking online. Why couldn't we, you know, That's my right. money and protect yep. my money, baby, protect my vote. 
So there are ways to get that done. I think if, if there's a political will, there certainly is a way. And coronavirus, again, has really caused us to think anew about some of the things that we just did on a routine basis. And voting is part of that. we got to think anew and come up with better ideas to advance representative democracy and to right. take down hurdles and, ba- and barriers. We don't want barriers to the – well, some of us don't want barriers to the, to the ballot box. You know, you know, uh, Senator Turner, I, I really can't get behind Joe Biden until I see him with an economic black agenda. I need a criminal justice reform agenda so he can undo some of the damage he caused with the 94 crime bill. I want him to have a black woman as a running mate. He already said he'll put a black woman on the Supreme Court. And I did. I need to see more people around him that I can trust. So when you tell me things like, oh, I'm not going to be part of the task force or they don't want me part of the task force. That lets me know that they just want the same old, same old in the White House again. Am I wrong for feeling like that? I'm I'm not in, I'm not enthused to vote for him at all. Anybody but Trump don't scare me. You're not wrong to feel that way, Charlemagne. It's real, and it is because of people like you and the Breakfast Club, where people can come in and speak their truth. You know, the having a black woman on the Supreme Court, been that's been due, and that was mm-hmm. something that Reverend Jesse Jackson. I want to give Reverend Jackson a shout out on this. Before he endorsed Senator Sanders, that was something that was on his list. He had 13 things that he wanted Senator Sanders to commit to, and that was one of them. So actually, our campaign uh, put that out there first, and I'm glad that uh, Vice President Biden uh, copied that. Uh, that that copy right. is a beautiful thing. But you're right. You've got to have people that surround you that are not just yes men and yes women. And you, we all have to come to grips with our, with our, you know, the things that we have done as public servants. And the crime bill is one of those. What happened to Professor Anita Hill is another. And I just don't understand how we in the black community, you know, we allow people to treat our women and our yes. people any kind of way. And they don't even have to atone for that. I'm not saying that you got to carry that on your back forever, but you got to atone for that. And we know that the last interview that Professor Anita Hill did, she said she was not accepting that apology. That should matter to the black community. We should make some real demands. So I'm with you with that on that, Charlemagne, that we do need a real black agenda. But black folks need a real black agenda too. Hello, somebody. Mm-hmm. We need to put forward our collective yes. agenda. And stop letting people, anybody, even politicians I admire and like. This ain't about like at this point. This is about survival, getting from survival to thrive mode. At some point in our black lives, I want somebody to stand up and say, I made it from survival to thriving. And I want more than a handful of us to get there. You know, when I get to heaven, right. I don't want to have to act brand new. I want to know what street paper with gold look like. You know, so, 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 nobody know. <laughs> you know, I want to pass some of that right here. <laughs> In a, no, Nina, you're right, though. This is the perfect time for people to be putting forth their agendas and saying, we're not supporting you unless this, this, and this can happen. We have to figure these things out. It is a perfect time to be putting that forward to Joe Biden to let him know what our demands are and to have that ready uh, in place so you can say, you're not getting our endorsement unless these demands are met. And that is the perfect time for us to have a plan moving forward instead of just saying, okay, I'm not supporting him because I just don't like the things that he's done in the past. Now is the time to say, moving forward, this is what we need. Well, right. and it's yeah. Not just about the past, too, it's also, and I'm sorry, Charlotte, it's also about, you know, this man said that if Medicare for all came to his best, so we, right, you're right, we, we don't have to go back 10, 20 years. So unless he has, has changed his mind today, which I'm going to be yes. open to that, mm-hmm. in the mm-hmm. latest interview where he was asked a question about Medicare for all, he said if it came to his death, he would veto it. That's not 10 years ago. That's not even no. two months ago. Mm-hmm. Right. right. And that's something that I think that absolutely, as we can see right now, dealing with everything that we've been dealing with, that has to be something that is a must moving forward. Mandatory. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Right. Do you think it's been too much focus on Trump and not enough on on Biden? Because I've been questioning Biden's leadership, right? Because, you know, over the past several weeks, we see Donald Trump on TV every day doing his daily briefings about coronavirus. And there wasn't really any counter programming coming from the person who was supposed to be the Democratic nominee. So much so that when Cuomo started doing his daily briefings, that became the counter programming. And now people looking at Cuomo like, yo, we want him to run for president. So you, do you think it's either a lack of leadership on, on Biden's part? Like he's not capable of being a leader or is this too much focus on Trump? Well, he needs to get out there. You know, this is a competition. So although the primary, the way the, the way the primary may have been paved his way, that's not going to happen in the general. This is going to be hand-to-hand combat with this president. Mm-hmm. And so 
Vice President Biden is going to have to get out there more and show the people how he's going to lead, what is his vision. And, and, and a point that you made, Charlamagne, that I didn't get the answer about, you know, is it enough just to be anti-Trump? No, it's not enough. It's not. And I want people to dream a bigger dream and to expand their mind. We've been so seduced by the fact that Donald Trump is, is rotten. And we get that. Those are, We got that memo. But what is your vision? <laughs> so, yes, we must both defeat President Donald Trump and also have a vision. That's not an either or. And you're right. That's right. saying anti-Trump, anti-Trump. That's not going to move a whole lot of people, especially disaffected voters, especially people who are the most vulnerable, and especially on the backdrop of corona. I mean, what really is going to motivate me if I'm already suffering? To go Word. To <laughs> right? Word. I need to hear something. I need to know something. And not just hear I need some guarantees that you actually going to do the things that you said that you're going right. to do. And you're not just saying them to seduce me to vote for you. That's the kind of leadership that we need. So it's both and. Yes, defeat Donald Trump and have a vision. And that is the part that is lacking right now, to have a vision. But some people in the corporate Democratic side think it's just going to be enough to say to people, Donald Trump is the worst. Donald Trump is bad. Donald Trump is this. Donald Trump is that. Okay, got that memo. But what are you going to do? That's what we need That's to right. see. Vision. And no, this, this, for the people. This is my last question, Senator Turner. Um, you, 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 you don't think uh, even Bernie would say, I want you on a task force? If he's going to be a part of these task force? You know, Char, listen, honestly, I've not been a part of those negotiations. Look, I called I called Vice President Biden out. So let's be honest here. You guys know I wrote an op-ed, just laying it out, just telling the truth. So that does You told the truth, though. I, I, I know, but sometimes there's a consequence for telling the truth, you know. Mm. There, there are consequences for telling the truth. So I, I, can I can't vote for somebody. a person. I, I, I can't, can't vote for somebody that says, okay, this person was a person that called me out and perhaps they were right. So let me bring that person yes. in to help me right yes. my wrongs. And I think that's really valuable. And that would make me say, okay, he's really above this. Okay. This person yes. disagree with me. I'm not with them. That would make me say, okay, I can rock with that. Yes. I can't you vote for a person who's punishing somebody for telling the truth. That sounds great. That's a great leader. I'm saying it. I, breakfast, breakfast club. You're hearing it here first. Angela. Charlemagne, DJ, and they don't want me on no task force. That would be a great leader. That's what a great leader would do. Hearing it from me. Mm -hmm. That's a well, damn thank shame. Thank you, Nina Turner, for checking already, in. We I've appreciate you been, so much. I've already been told you, you, they don't want me. Damn. Oh, wow. They don't want you? Does that make you feel bad for supporting Senator Sanders then? Because he's got to have some power and some say. No, 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 no. This has nothing to do with Senator Sanders in that way. And what I mean by that is that this was always about the movement. These were always about the issues that I believe in, period. So rocking with them is not a thing for me. I'm rocking with the people all the way. <laughs> and they cannot, what they can't take away is my leadership and my influence and how I have changed the course of history. So they can have those little task force. I want some real deliverables for the people. That's what I want. There you have it. Well, let me go ahead and say it for you, Senator Turner. Fuck them people. <laughs> hey, that's what I was, thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you, Nina Turner, for checking in. We appreciate you so much. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate you all, too, for keeping it real. And always, I get to be my total black self on The Breakfast Club. I love y'all. All right. Absolutely. Thank you so love much. Love you, too, Senator Turner. All right. Stay healthy. You, too.